The crisis of confidence rocking the hierarchy of the All Progressives Congress appears to be deepening. The party leadership disagree over several issues and calls for the resignation of the APC's national chairman, John Oyegun, arrive. How does the party plan to save itself from implosion? That's our focus tonight on the program. Many thanks for joining in everyone. This is Politics Today live on Channel Television. We are reaching you from our global headquarters here in Lagos. I'm Emana Amawe. And tonight we look at the rumblings going on within the ranks of the ruling All Progressives Congress. Just yesterday, the party's acting national publicity secretary, Timmy Frank, announced that he would not rest on his oars until the party's national chairman, Chief John Oyegun, steps down from that position. But before we delve into the issue for the day, let me remind you not to be left out of the conversation. Do remember that we are live right now on Facebook. Watch, comment, and be part of the show. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. Well, let's begin tonight with the Edo State Elections Petitions Tribunal sitting in Benin. The tribunal has granted the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, and the Young Democratic Party, the YDP, leave to serve their petitions by substituted service on the All Progressives Congress. The court's processes are also to be served on Mr. Godwin Obaseki, the governor-elect by substituted service. The PDP and its governorship candidate, uh, Sage Ize Yamo, and the Young Democratic Party and its candidate in the governorship election, Nuruddin Iwamfero, are challenging the outcome of the September the 28th Edo governorship election. The petitioners in their separate petitions named the Independent National Electoral Commission, the All Progressives Congress, and Mr. Obaseki as first, second, and third respondents, respectively. Justice A. Badamasi is the chairman of the three-member tribunal with Justices A. Ade Shodun and Kadi Adamo Usman as members. Determined to have the stolen mandate returned and Pastor Zemo sworn in as governor. It may take time. It may take six months, seven months, but the truth is the mandate will be returned and the two people will get the governor they voted for. All the processes, because we believe that we can defend our case. And therefore, I still don't believe that uh, the reason for the closure of the Secretariat is as a result of uh, attempts to evade service. And now ahead of the Ondo State Governorship elections next month, the two factions of the People's Democratic Party continue to mount pressure on the Independent National Electoral Commission to recognize their candidates. The faction of the embattled national chairman of the PDP, Senator Ali Modu Sharif, and that of the party's caretaker committee chairman, Senator Ahmed Makafi, insist that their candidates must be recognized, even though the electoral laws only make provision for one candidate per political party. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission has described the situation as unfortunate and dangerous for democracy. Well, um, we are following the developments on the low um, um, on the governorship elections slated for November the 26th and um, 2016, and we will keep you posted as events unfold ahead of D-Day. Well, now to our main topic tonight, the crisis riddling the ruling party in the country. Of course, it's not been a walk in the park for the All Progressives Congress since it came into power in May 2015. There have been claims and counterclaims, allegations and definitely counter-allegations from the constitution of the leadership of both chambers of the National Assembly to ministerial appointments and most recently insinuations of lack of adequate consultations with the progressive governors in the ambassadorial nominations. There's been allegations of manipulations of the delegates list in the Undo state governorship primaries of the All Progressives Congress. And um, there's also been allegations by the Senate president that the government has been hijacked and there is, that there is a government in government. The president himself has not been spared either. His wife, Aisha Buhari, granted an interview to the BBC and made certain accessions which incited different reactions, all making it clear that all might not be well in the APC. After all, well, let's see what um, the wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, had to say when she granted the inter interview to the BBC. Complaints upon complaints. 
as I decided to tell him. But all the same, a lot of people have been coming on their own and also collectively to tell him that things are not going the way it should. That is when it comes to like putting people in certain positions because most of these people that are occupying some agencies, number one, nobody knows them. Number two, they don't know our manifesto, our party manifesto. They don't know what we campaign for. They were not part of us completely. They don't have a mission. They don't have a vision of our APC. I have my own right, you know, to say how I feel about something. If it continues like this, me, I'm not going. To, I'm not going to be part of any movement again because I need to. I need to work with the people that we have started to join collectively as a teamwork so that we can achieve what we want to achieve so that he will leave a legacy. Have you told your husband all this? Yeah, he knows. He knows. The voice of the wife of the president, Aisha Buhari. Well, Mr. President also reacted to what his wife had to say. Let's take a listen. I don't know which party my wife belongs to, but... Uh... She belongs to my kitchen and my living room and the other room. Um, uh, it's, it's not easy to, uh, uh, to do away with your opposition or people who have not followed you along your campaign trail. Uh, I hope my wife will remember that I was in the field for 12 years. I tried three times. The first time I managed to succeed, and I ended up the first three times ending up in Nigerian Supreme Court. So I claim superior knowledge over her and the rest of the opposition, because in the end I have succeeded. President of Nigeria, Mohamedou Buhari. The list is endless. It can go on and on. The party has been saddled with varying degrees of disagreement on key issues. And though the party has before now maintained that all is well in its household, the factions have been glaring and things appear to have finally come to a head. Only yesterday, the party's acting national publicity secretary, Mr. Timmy Frank, said he's on a mission to rescue the party and bluntly demanded that the APC National Chairman, Chief John Oyegun, resigns. Well, the man who made that call, the Acting National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Timmy Frank, is in Abuja studios and he now joins me in the conversation. Thank you for joining us. Now, it's, it's been under wraps for some time now, but it seems to be out in the open. What exactly is the problem with the All Progressives Congress? Um, yes, uh, let me thank you first of all for this opportunity and uh, I want to clearly make my position clear again to members of my party and to Nigerians and uh, I still insist on my earlier position that uh, I'm about to embark on a journey, on a rescue mission to save our party because if we don't just what I've said within it. the next short period of time, I can clearly tell you, you know, Nigerians who lost confidence on us as a party, and that is why, as a young man, I believe I have to take the bull by the horn, you know, to correct the wrongs within the party. Because as of today, whether we like it or not, we cannot hide for too long that there is crisis rocking our party. And then that has been my position right from day one. And by the grace of God, you know, that has come to, to stay. And uh, I believe on the only way we can achieve, you know, peace in this party, and the only way we can achieve victory, we need a national chairman that can unite every one of us, that can reunite, unite the crisis rocking the party. Virtually, as of today in all the states, you know, there is party, and it's not going to be an easy battle, you know, for me. And uh, I can assure you, at the end of the day, I'm going to achieve this victory. And uh, I'm putting everything in place to make sure, you know, the national chairman has to resign, whether he likes it or not, because he has not been able to, you know, handle the affairs of this party very well. And uh, this is my position, you know, right now. And that is why I said I'm going to write a letter to the president, you know, to seek... Uh, 
an audience to enable me to go and brief him as the president and the leader of a party, the current, you know, state of the party. And I'm not just going to end there. I'm going to also write the vice president. I'm also going to write, uh, you know, the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar. I'm going to also write the Senate president. I'm also going to write uh, Bola Mentunubu, the national leader of the party. I'm also going to write the speaker of House of Representatives you know, to enable me. And at the same time, the old, uh, you know, national chairman that uh, made this uh, change to, to work, like uh, the national chairman of the then ACN, B.C. Akande, I'm also going to notify him. I'm also going to notify, you know, Bonaya Ono of the ANPP. I'm also going to notify uh, the national chairman of the CPC at that time, uh, Chief Tony Momo. I'm also going to notify the governor of Imo State who led a faction of the ABGA, you know, to the APC. And uh, it is very important I take this decision at this point in time because I want my party to succeed in 219 and All because right. I want the party to make sure we resolve this internal crisis that is rocking the party from all angles. And okay, just, just a moment, Mr. Frank. We'll take a moment now. When we, when we return, we'll continue the conversation and you throw light on the rescue mission you are actually embarking on. Please stay with us.